Hello guys, I have my husband here. You know, Army has allowed him to be by my side, which is great. So today we're gonna do a video that we've been trying to for a while, and I don't know his responses yet, but we're gonna do the 10 things he didn't expect about pregnancy. Okay, are you ready? Ready. Okay, you can start. <laughs> All right, so one of the first things that happened pretty quick was uh, just like emotional changes, I think in both of us. <laughs> um, you know, like they talk about prenatal depression and stuff like that. Yeah. And just the how easy it is when you're pregnant to like go to really high highs and really low lows as opposed yeah. to how it normally would be. You know, some like small things can, you know, hit us a lot harder. Bigger things hit us a lot bigger. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely agree with that it's, one. It's a lot easier to be in a low spot because of it, I think. Yeah, I, I mean, I literally feel like I have the control of my emotions, like a toddler, a, I can never say that word, a toddler, a toddler. that would have. I, yeah. that's, that's, it also took away a lot of her uh, phonetic capabilities. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. Okay, numero dos. All right. The other thing was uh, nausea. I know nausea in pregnancy is a normal thing, but it just... I thought it was weird how it's not like after you eat or when you smell something. Sometimes it'll just be random, especially in the first trimester. We'll just be in the car and be like, oh, I'm really nauseous. And then we'll pull over and we puke and then we keep going. Or, you know, we'd go to the gym and you'd, you know, work out and then you'd be crazy nauseous all day. So how that just kind of comes in waves randomly. Yeah. And we don't, don't expect, especially before we had like dog slimming or whatever that nausea stuff is. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy because like. It would just come out of nowhere. And like, I've seen a lot, of, I follow a lot of pregnancy stuff and it's like, people are like, oh yeah, but like, you know, I have all these cravings and I enjoy food and I love food. But like, I just be nauseous all the time. Just all the time. And I still get it. I still get nausea. Yeah. It's not as bad at all. I cannot even complain because those first four months, it was like, I don't know. I didn't think I was going to survive it. I didn't think I was going to get here. You're cute though. <laughs> okay, numero tres. So the third one was the all day sickness, which someone else called morning sickness, but it's not just in the morning, it's all day, all the time. <laughs> all the time, 24 <laughs> 7. Nausea, but all sorts of stuff, just like, you know, when your stomach's hurting and you're feeling pain. And I thought that would be a morning thing, but it's an all day thing. Thanks to the person that named it morning sickness, it was yeah, very great accurate. Job, dude. <laughs> Someone okay. needs to get fired. Um, number four, you talk about cravings. I put anti-cravings. <laughs> you see, you know, like in movies, you'll see like people running to get ice cream at two in the morning because the wife wants ice cream. But for you, it's more like you don't want anything. And then every once in a while, there's a little like window of something. You're like, oh, I could eat this, but it's not like, oh, I need this. Yeah. It's like the opposite of cravings for everything all the time. <laughs> That's been really hard on me because I'm a foodie. Like I went to culinary school. I, I got a, a restaurant degree. Like food is my thing. I love cooking for him, but like in my specialty, like I love Italian food and pastas, like nothing. I can't eat almost anything. I can barely eat chicken. I can barely eat most meats. Like I just, I'm anti, that's exactly what it is. I'm just anti-craving. I don't eat things. Which is, then I just have to force myself to eat. And especially at the beginning, that would just make me throw up more. So, that was super frustrating. Okay, bye. Good thing I had was sleep. Um, it's generally, you're either like knocked out, like you fall asleep instantly. And then you sleep for like 12 hours and don't wake up at all. Or it's like, you can't sleep, you just lay there all night. Sometimes it's both of us laying there. Um takes you a while to fall asleep, little things, or like sometimes, some nights you have to go to the bathroom every 10 minutes, some nights you're knocked out, so it's like weird how sleep fluctuates like that. Yeah, very true. Six? Um, number six, I wasn't, I was actually impressed with this, but it's your strength retention, I had written down. Um, she can still do like four or five dips in a row, she can still do pull-ups, and she's seven months pregnant now, so that's kind of impressive. I was expecting her to not be able to really do a lot of that stuff, but I mean, we go to the gym and she could still do a decent amount of... I try my best stuff. to not do, like, I went through a period where it was like a month or two where like I was afraid to do any exercise, because like you said, we would go to the gym 
And like at first, in the first trimester, going to the gym would help my nausea. But then in like the second, at the beginning of the second trimester, it would like, I wouldn't know how hard to push myself or not. And then I would get there and like, I'd be working out and it'd be fine. And then all of a sudden, like it was like, I was here and then I was suddenly here and then I couldn't even form sentences. So then I like got super scared of like working out for a while. And then lately we've been doing like little bits and pieces, but like, it's still like, it scares me, but I, I have been able to retain a lot okay. of my strength, which like last summer when we started really training, I couldn't do a single pull up. I could not even dream about doing a dip. And like now that I'm seven months pregnant, I can still do it, which is really cool. But I try not to do those because my abdomen can get really messed up. Okay. For okay. seven, I had belly expectations. So she, she has the perfect size bump. Um, it's great. But a lot of people will tell her like, oh, you don't even look pregnant. Or like, wow, like I wasn't this big. And, you know, everyone's, everyone's different and how their body grows and changes. I think she's pretty blessed because she's still pretty cute. Um, but people come up and be like, oh, you don't even look pregnant. Thinking like it's a compliment. But really like, you know, every, like she's pregnant. She's going through a lot. So people shouldn't kind of like put their expectations of what a seven month you know, belly, Pregnant should, belly look like. should look like, yeah. Because everyone's different. They'll see videos of people who are nine months and barely have anything, or who are five months and have huge mongo looking people. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I mean that that's really annoying. Like it especially like we've had a pretty rough pregnancy. We've had lots of ER visits, we've had just lots of things that we didn't expect and then like to go through all this and you're like, well, at least I'm pregnant. I get to feel my little baby. I can see my belly. I'm very proud of my belly. I love my belly. And then when people come up to me and they're like, yeah, you barely look pregnant. And they expect it to be a compliment because apparently everyone and the mother wants to be super skinny or whatever. But like that's, that's your opinion of what you would like to be. Doesn't mean like, that's what I would like to be. Like, I don't know. It's really frustrating. Gets me really, really angered up sometimes. It's <laughs> a fiery. <laughs> okay, was the next one eight? Yeah, eight. for eight I had hospital care, so you know she's high risk, and we've been to the hospital quite a few times, not always for the best reasons, and sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's just not at all even close to good. Like there's been times where we thought we were losing the baby, and we go, and then we sit in a waiting room for two hours, and then when they finally see her, they say she has to be by herself, and I'm like so. You're gonna tell me if you have to tell her that the baby's dead, she has to hear that alone, and they're like, "Yep." Yeah. Or we'll go thinking that the baby's coming and she's having contractions, and they just are like, "All right, well, we'll measure you. Uh, you look okay. Come back if you feel the symptoms you've been feeling." And we're like, "Wait, we've we're that's why we're here. We're still feeling those symptoms." And they're like, "Yeah, so come back if you get them." And we're like, "Right now." <laughs> <laughs> they're going on right now. Great. Yeah, it, or we won't even see a doctor. We'll just go and see like all these nurses. It was just, I mean, it was atrocious. Like last week, that was when the contractions happened, and I never saw a doctor. It was all nurses, and the equipment that measures, um, I think it's a Togo or whatever. It's like a machine that measures your contractions and the heart monitor. They were placed incorrectly, and I called to like, hey, like this isn't working. They're not gather, like they're not getting my information because I feel the contractions. I know when they're happening and they're not popping up on the screen. It's like something's going wrong and 20, 30 minutes passed and they were, they had said, yeah, we'll send someone. But when somebody came in through the door, it wasn't even fix, to fix the monitor. It was like they ignored whatever that was and just came to pick up the paper and then went to look at it. And then from that, that's like when they discharged us. But it's like the paper doesn't have an accurate representation of what I was feeling because I told you it, it's not getting it like you placed it wrong. It was, we didn't have any, they didn't give us any tips on how to make her feel better or like nothing. advice or anything. They're like, all right, help. come back if you feel like you feel right now. Thanks guys. Good work. But I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow, so hopefully that'll give us a little bit of, of a better look at that. So for number nine, I just, I had the army. Um, the army always talks about how they're, you know, like they care about your families. And for the most part, I hadn't gotten that until she was pregnant um and i was actually expecting to be in ranger school right now right now and we were worried i was going to miss the birth of the baby or i was just going to be stuck at fort benning georgia for months at a time when 
my, my duty station is supposed to be Colorado and we've been wanting to get there as soon as possible. And they actually, the army was really good with that. They so were blessed. PCS and us early. So, and I, so I can come blessed. back for ranger school once the baby's born and once she's healthy. Um, so we actually had, I was just expecting some captain to like help us, but they had us go meet with a lieutenant colonel and then a full bird colonel who's my brigade commander. He was super helpful. Um, got everything in motion for us to get to Colorado, have the baby there, and then come back when, when we're ready for ranger. I mean, the Army has been really difficult to deal with just because, I mean, he's in a school type of, his time right now is school related. So the time blocks that he needs to be too dedicated to the Army are a lot. Like, there's a lot of time that he needs to be at the Army and like doing whatever Army things he does. And that's been really difficult through the pregnancy because I've had to do a lot of doctor visits and stuff like by myself. But this major thing, you know, having the baby almost come last week and like, just trying to get situated they've I mean they've helped us a month like way more than we we thought we were possible and now we're gonna be able to possibly like go out to Carson like get situated find me doctors like meet with my new job people and like it'll be good so if we're super excited if I wasn't Ranger now and I finished in one go which is hard to do before the baby came out then we'd be moving across the country unloading into a new house right as the baby's supposed to come so this is definitely the best option um, yeah. we're actually, I've, I've spent more days sleeping in the field than I have in this house since we bought it. And we're also selling this house in a week. So yeah, that's interesting. Exactly. I didn't expect when that, but and then last one? the last one I had was getting pregnant. Um, everyone huh. says it takes six months to a year to conceive. So we started in August and we figured we started in July, yeah. July. And it was, Sometime in the summer, we were like, you know, it'll probably take us six months to a year. You know, we'll be pregnant by like Christmas. Baby will be born end of the summer and or in the fall. Totally in Carson. You'll have gone through ranger school. Yeah. I'll have finished Figured my school. Figured she'd be like kind of like... pregnant as I start ranger. And we got pregnant almost right away. It was like that crazy. I mean, and I know so many people struggle with getting pregnant. Like it, we are so, so blessed. And we get that. And we've been able to understand that, like seeing other people's videos and reactions. But just like from our interactions with the doctors that we spoke to, the people that we spoke to, everyone made it seem like, oh, this is gonna take so long to happen. So we we're like, okay, we'll start trying. So then like, I don't have to, cause really the big, the big thing was like birth control. Birth control was taking everything out of me. Like I was in bed for like five, 10 days, just unable to move, crying in miserable pain. And I just didn't wanna have that in me anymore. So we took it out and we decided like, okay, whatever happens, like we weren't really trying to have a baby. And then the like right. time came and then we wanted to have a baby. And then it just like, we we're like, okay, so let's start trying. It'll probably not happen for a while anyway. So like, why not even, why even worry about it? But it did happen right away. So like, that was super great, but it was like a huge shock. Yeah, it wasn't something that we, it was like, we knew it was a possibility, but we had planned, you know, six months to a year to happen. and. And then it just happened right away. And it's like becoming a parent, like the entire process, I like how it's been described to me and how I've read um, pregnancy is really be, you becoming a parent. Like that's, that's why it's so hard because you're, you're literally becoming that parent that's going to teach your child. Like that's one of the hardest jobs in the world, but like, it was just a lot to like process. And it, it took us a while to both get in the same page and to like, it, it just like, it was have our goals be somewhat similar. similar yeah. But yeah, it was definitely it was definitely a blessing because we get to get to, you know, we're in Georgia. I'm not the biggest Georgia fan. I love Colorado, so we'll be where we want to be sooner because of it, and you know, start a family should be nice. Yeah, I mean, everything happens for a reason. I love this little boy. We are so excited to be having him, and we're so excited to start a family. And I mean, Max is our child too, so this is our second boy. He's really big now. <laughs> Max is so big. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're super excited. It's just been, this whole pregnancy has just been like a shock. Like, it's been like one after the other. It's been like, what? And then like, what again? And then you're like, I can't be surprised again. And then it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it, it's been quite a wild ride. COVID also makes things interesting. Yeah, Not yeah. The best word. I mean, COVID has allowed, given us a lot of opportunities, like last year when we got married and stuff. And like, it's been on and off and like opportunities and challenges, but like, Pregnancy wise, hospital visits, having him with me along with like the journey of doctors and appointments, it's 
it's made it a lot more difficult. And obviously when you sign up to be a parent, like when you're planning it, like you expect your partner to be there. And when he's not allowed to be there, like that sucks. Yeah. But yeah, that was your list. Everything's, I hadn't heard it before, but I mean, I mean, we've talked about all this stuff before, so makes sense. But yeah, guys, I have him back. Hopefully I get him for more time than not now and we can make more videos together. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos with Jesse included and Max included. And yeah, see you next time.